How you going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today's job we have a front suspension strut barrel off a 777 dump truck in for repair. On a 777 dump truck there are two front struts, one on the left, one on the right. They have a chrome rod that goes down the middle of them and they are then backed up by oil and nitrogen gas which acts as the shock absorber. And there's also a top cap that gets bolted onto the top of the strut which connects the strut to the top chassis of the dump truck. So the front struts do cop quite a flogging because not only do they take the weight of the truck while while it is in operation. The rod that goes down the inside of the strut has a wheel end mounted to it, which the front tire mounts to that. It does all the turning, the rods turn within the barrel. When you consider how much weight these things can carry and they need to stop in a hurry and they apply the brakes, all that inertia is going back through the strut. So it's not uncommon for their wear bands to wear out or for them to simply break the strut rods off altogether. This one's come in because the wear band groove has worn out. And at the moment, the wear band doesn't stay in one spot in the barrel. It is actually walking up and down the barrel. And what it actually does, it starts to create a ramp. Sooner or later, it will actually breach the seal and then it drops all the oil. So in order to reclaim that wear band groove, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna do all the work in the bottom of the barrel. So I'm gonna build up that area and then re-machine it straight again to give it a nice 90 degree corner for the wear band to seat against. Even though this seems like a very simple fast repair, it is not going to be that way. There is going to be a lot of setup in order to do this correctly. So ideally you'd do something like this in a horizontal borer. I do not have a horizontal borer. For those wondering why don't I use my kitchen and walker, it is not a horizontal borer. It is a facing borer. It does not have a quill like a horizontal borer. And it is actually not functioning at the moment. It is still a work in progress. So we're going to do this repair in the lathe. Before I can set this up in the lathe, I do need to give it a quick clean up. It's stuck in there, isn't it? There's a shackle in there. Oh. How am I going to get past? Mmm. 
Where's the shackle? Down inside of the barrel. Can you reach down in there? No. Maybe. Let's see. Yay! <laughs> Very good. Thank you for sending me that. So I'm just sort of testing the setup to see how I'm going to do things. We haven't done this exact repair on a strut before. We have done an upgraded seal area where I was able to put the tailstock chuck down inside the strut. So I was able to access the seal area without a steady being in the way, where this case is not the same. I need to take the tailstock out of the way. I do need to machine up a piece of pipe to slip on the bottom of the strut so I can then support it with the steady and I will also need to put some sort of counterweight on top of the barrel to offset the mounting plate so it spins a little bit more evenly. Right, now that we've got our piece of tube on there, I'm going to stitch that on and then we're going to get on to setting up our counterweight.
So this is a piece of plate I'm going to use as my counterweight. If I put it on one way, it's gonna fit really well, but that would mean I would have to drill holes in it and use threaded rod to attach it onto the strut. It's actually for something else and I don't wanna drill holes in it. So I'm gonna turn it the other way. I'm gonna make up a clamp that goes over this piece of plate, down through the bolt holes in the mounting plate for the strut. Right, now that we've got that set up, we're going to increase the speed so we can cut our steady band for our steady to run on.
you figured out what the next problem is? No. How do I get my tailstock chucked back? So I wonder if anyone else has noticed about the tailstock being where it is and the big bit of pipe surrounding it and not being able to get a chuck key in it. There's no fit. Uh-oh. Well, way ahead of you. I have a special tool. We're free. Righto guys, so we've got this set up now. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a dial gauge down the inside of the barrel. I'm gonna check a few of the different surfaces to see if there's any run out there. So I've put the dial gauge on a few of the different services inside. We are getting a lot of run out. What I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna throw another dial gauge in there so I can have one of them on the back surface and one on a front surface to see if the run out is concentric and it is even or if it is offset of each other. Right, so the two dial indicators sort of proved what I suspected. We do have a few surfaces in there that aren't running concentric with each other. We have one gauge climbing while the other one is decreasing. That tells me something severely out of round. So I'm gonna get an internal mic. I'm gonna measure across a few of the faces to see if those bores are round or they are egg shaped. That's tight there. That's not good. Jesus. It's two mil out of round. So that there is a machine face, so the wiper seal goes there, and behind it is the pressure seal. That is two mil egg shape that way to that way. Not as bad. The wiper seal face, it is actually half a mil egg shape. We're getting a lot of discrepancies in the measurements here. Because it's gonna be quite difficult to mic the wear band area, I'm gonna put a bore gauge down there so we can see what it's doing. Set zero. That end of the hole is 0.4 of a mil tighter than this end of the hole. I'm going to set that one to zero. Get 0.4 of a mil loose at this end. So 
So the bore gauge indicates we are 0.4 of a mil tight on the top side of the wear band. I'm going to rotate the barrel around 90 degrees so we can check it along the surface that should take all the wear. Whoa, 0.6 mil tighter, the top side, just zero this. Come back down again. Yeah, 0.6 of a mil loose, bottom side. Now that we've got the barrel set up like that, we have 0.6 of a mil oversize on the bottom end of the strut. There is a lot of wear throughout the wear band area, so I'm going to have to talk to my customer because the repair this came in for, which was just building up that lip that has ramped out, it's not going to work. It's going to be really difficult to try and machine something true when nothing else is running true. Everything needs to be in alignment and concentric. So we've got far too much run out in all the areas in order for me to do this repair and it actually work. What I would need to do to make this right would be to bore out the entire area, weld up everything, and then remachine it back to size. But I can't make that call, so I'll talk to my customer and see what they want to do. My hand's scratching. <laughs> Lizard's stuck. But Yeah. And a socket. Yeah. <laughs> Poor little thing. <laughs> oh. Just upset. Oh. That bought me, dude. Oh. Don't run back up there. Oh, up you go. So that's the second time I've saved a lizard. The last one was crawled through a little piece of pipe and got stuck. And they just seem to try and go places they shouldn't go. Right, guys, so I've just got off the phone to my customer. I've explained to him the situation and the problems we are having. What I would need to do in order to bring this back to a factory spec doesn't meet the budget. So they have decided we're going to put this one on hold for the time being. They do have another couple of these struts over there they can rebuild and put back into stock. But at the moment, this one's on the back burner. We're gonna pull it out of the machine and give it back to our customer. But not all repairs go to plan, so this is just one of those cases where things didn't work out.
Yeah, Fords. <laughs> there is going to be a lot of setup, but it's all going to work out in the end. Hmm. How you going, guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So today's job, we have a triple seven front strut barrel in for. Hmm. How you going, guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So for today's job, we have a front strut. Take three. Mm -hmm. hmm. Right, so the front struts do quop, uh, quop. Across the plane we've got it set up now, we are 0.6 of a mil looser than the top. Looser, is that a word? Now? What? what? What now? Right, so now what I need, uh, what do you mean what now? Are you ready? Oh, you're very close. You're very close. Is that enough holding it up? Yeah, heaps. <laughs> Jesus Christ, did that bolt break? <laughs> This thing needs refurbishing. Is that good? No way. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Why don't you put it up first and then set your thing? There you go. Yep. Oh, it's not on. <laughs> it's gonna be hard for you to see what I'm doing. I can't even see. Why is that one going backwards? Yeah. So that originally was set to zero. So is that yeah. meaning it's six mil? No, it's 0 0.6. 0 0.6 mil tighter. Really? <laughs> oh. Hey, he's Tom. probably scared. I'd say he's scared shitless. He's stuck in a hole. Oh, he's got himself stuck. He's gonna get scared. He's gonna get his fucking head rattles what he's gonna get. 